Tan oak is a broadleaf evergreen hardwood related to oaks. Like true oaks, it forms a nut called an acorn. Tan oak's range is restricted to California and Oregon, where it often grows in association with coast redwood and other conifers. It is very susceptible to sudden oak death caused by the microorganism Phytophthora remorum. Symptoms on tan oak trunks are often similar to those on coast live oak. The pathogen causes bleeding cankers in the live bark or phloem. The canker is the area that has been killed by the pathogen. Beneath the outer bark surface, the canker appears as a brown discolored area, often with a dark border. As seen in coast live oak, older cankers can be colonized by ambrosia beetles and the wood decay fungus Annulohypoxylon thwarcianum. Both of these agents attack the sapwood. Bleeding on infected tan oaks can be very limited or entirely lacking. For example, the red mark on the trunk of this tree points to a tiny bit of bleeding near the base. Chipping off the outer bark exposed a large canker at the base of the tree that extended well beyond the bleeding area. By the following year, beetle boring dust was present, well above the previous canker edge, indicating continued expansion of the canker. Unlike P. remorum cankers in coast live oak, which are normally found in the lower trunk, cankers can develop at any point along a tan oak trunk. When this killed tan oak was cut down, the canker was found high on the trunk. The high canker had killed the top of the tree even though the bark was not infected below this point. Tan oak twigs and leaves are very susceptible to Phytophthora remorum infection. One characteristic symptom of infection is the blackening of the leaf midrib. P. remorum sporulates abundantly on infected twigs. In wet weather, multiple infection cycles can occur on tan oak, causing extensive twig blighting. High numbers of infected twigs in tan oak canopy can produce enough spores to initiate trunk infections. This is very different from the situation in coast live oak, where spores produced on infected California bay leaves initiate trunk cankers on the oaks. Even though Phytophthora remorum sporulates on tan oak twigs, the contribution of spores from nearby California Bay tends to increase the speed and severity of sudden oak death development in tan oak stands. The tan oaks around this bay were killed by sudden oak death before it moved into the rest of the stand, which is shown in the following images. When we first visited this area in northwestern Sonoma County in 2005, P. remorum was just getting active in the general area. The trees you see in this photo are all mature tan oaks. Looking at the same view in 2010, we see how sudden oak death has decimated the tan oaks in the forest. The green trees in the photo are mature Douglas firs, which are not killed by P. remorum. This photo series is taken from the opposite direction in the same area. The red circle marks a tan oak that has been killed by P. remorum. One year later, the dead tan oak in the background has lost most of its leaves, and a tan oak in the center of the view has died. In two more years, most of the tan oaks are dead and defoliated, and the Douglas fir trees in the background have become visible. The infected tree at the right is thinning and losing its leaves rather than turning brown all at once. After four more years, the tree on the right has died and many of the dead tan oaks have failed. Some small tan oaks still survive next to the road. Although P. remorum cankers in tan oak usually become large and kill trees within a few years, cankers on smaller stems sometimes become inactive. Here we see a bleeding P. remorum canker. Slicing off the dead outer bark reveals a fairly limited brown canker in the phloem. Two years later, the exposed bark has weathered, but there is no indication that the canker has expanded. The small tan oak seen here in 2002 was already infected by P. remorum in 2000 
when we first started observing it. A high trunk canker was in the circled area. In 2000, this canker already had some callus around the upper edge, but P. remorum was still active in portions of the canker. By 2002, callus had formed all around the canker. The canker remained inactive over the following years. However, due to additional twig infections in the canopy, dieback increased over time. Even though this canker was completely limited, this tree finally died in 2011. The high susceptibility of tan oak to P. remorum can dramatically change landscapes in just a few years. This stand of tan oaks and redwoods is on a ridge near the coast and leaves are commonly wet from heavy fog. When we first visited this stand in 2008, P. remorum was not present. Phytophthora remorum invaded this stand in 2011. The red circles mark early symptoms of sudden oak death as branches high in the canopy were killed by the pathogen. A year later, many of these trees were dead. After another year, more tan oaks had died. Trees that were dead in 2012 had lost most of their leaves. Because P. remorum can complete its entire life cycle on tan oak, sudden oak death is very difficult to manage. Practical and effective ways to prevent or limit disease in tan oak stands have not yet been identified. Perhaps the best hope for tan oak lies among the numerous tan oak seedlings and saplings. If some of these have enough resistance to the pathogen, natural selection could give rise to a disease-resistant population. Tan oak seedlings are also being screened for resistance by researchers in hope that resistant or tolerant varieties can be developed.